dismissing our young people here and it's time uh, to dismiss and let our young people go to their class and um, we love you little guys nice nice group of young people we want to welcome everybody to Bethel Church we want to thank you all for tuning in, who are tuning in by Facebook. We want to thank you all for putting Jesus Christ first this morning, for being here. Um, our God is an awesome God. And the Christ we serve gave up everything he gave up his existence in heaven to come and to spend time here on the earth and to uh, bring us salvation through his death on the cross and it is I don't know that we can truly find a way to fathom the great love of Jesus Christ. I don't think we really understand how good our God is. I think we are so caught up and we have been in this world system so long and the world has shaded everything that we think and everything that we do. We find uh, that we can, we, we just think that we can operate it the way business as usual and still please God. And that is not true. We think that uh, through our own worldly wisdom that we can think things through and decide what's right and what's wrong. We want to depend on our own devices instead of watching and listening to what the Word of God has to say to us. And we're going to be in uh, the book of 1 John this morning. I really debated strongly uh, whether I was going to preach this sermon this morning or not. There's something that's weighing heavy on my heart. And um, I'm just going to read to you what's heavy on my heart. And this is... Uh, chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians and, and I want people to take this home with them and, and spend the week reading these the first part of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not carry envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails.
please take that with you this week. Do some study on that. Now, uh, the book of 1 John, chapter 2, beginning with verse 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Uh, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he that who does the will of God abides forever. Little children... It is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which you know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you, because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. Either he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it was taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears he may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. For if you've known that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. This is God's word. Father, we come in Jesus' name to ask you to witness to us this morning as we hear and open up these passages. Lord God, let the ideas come forward that you want to speak into people's hearts and minds. Father, let them hear the Holy Spirit talk to them and not me. Lord God, as this sermon goes forward, I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would call into our mind the things that we need to deal with with you. In Jesus' name, amen. First John 5.13 is the key verse of First John. I'll read it. 
these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. That is the purpose for 1 John being written. First, everything we've been talking about up until this point is being to help us know about our eternal future. It's to help us and to help the Holy Spirit speak to us. Are we really saved or are we just pretending to be saved? The, we've got a lot of people that are going to church in a lot of churches throughout this land who think that they're okay with the Lord. And maybe they're not. we got strong reasons here that we need to question our own salvations. Uh, each of us needs to question our own salvation. I'm not trying to say that to cause you to doubt yourself and to doubt your salvation. I'm trying to get everybody to examine themselves truthfully. He said that a lie cannot come out of truth. Paul or uh, John says that the truth has no lies in it. So are we going to tell ourselves the truth? Are we going to be honest with ourselves? Uh, we all must ask ourselves these questions. I want to address something else before we begin. Some of today's churches either want to have ecstatic experiences or they don't think that the Holy Spirit is there. Those churches wind up in confusion. There's no order. If they don't get goosebumps and have their hair standing on end, they don't think the Holy Spirit is here. He is here whether there's goosebumps or not. On the flip side, there are churches that refuse any operation of the Holy Spirit. They don't even want people raising their hands during praise and worship. We have extremes. How can the Holy Spirit get far with the congregation? Well, He does. He does work in even those churches. He is there and uh, whether they give Him freedom to work or not. The Holy Spirit is here. He is here. If I didn't have the Holy Spirit and the freedom to work with uh, the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't dare tell you the things I'm telling you. I'm not that person. If I didn't have the Holy Spirit sticking me from behind, I couldn't talk to you from the front. The Holy Spirit is here. And people want to go into a church and they decide, well, is the Holy Spirit there or not? Well, the scripture says, where two or more are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. We've repeated several times today that we're here to, to lift up Jesus Christ. If it's not all about Jesus, it's not about anything. If you... Uh, and I have had some people tell me that they did, they tried to do things to make me happy. And if anybody has done anything, if they're doing anything for Bethel Church to make me happy, you've come here with the wrong motive in mind. The motive should be that we come to worship Jesus Christ. We come to serve Jesus Christ. When we come through that door... And before we get to that door, we are to lay ourselves aside and pick up Jesus Christ in order that we all operate in the same frame of mind. 
And if we can't do that, we're not doing it for the right reasons. It's, I want to say clearly, it's all about Jesus. It's not about Bob Rogers. It's not about those of you who are here. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. And if we can't keep that in mind, we're going to have problems. People pick up jealousies. People pick up envyings. People pick up all kinds of things and they bring it to church, and that's not Jesus Christ. I, I just, I, I don't know how much more clear I can say it. The reason that we have church is to glorify Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's examine the fruit from the last two sermons. The first question we asked on the first, que first day was, do you like the fellowship with God's people? John's pretty big on this thing of loving God's people. He keeps hammering this notion. 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sin. Second question is, do we admit to having sin? Well, yeah, I'm just a sinner. Is that our mantra? Really? We're just going to say, yeah, I'm a sinner. That's, that should not be our mantra. Our, we should look. We should... What does the people of the, in the Bible do when they are confronted with their sin? They don't just glibly say, yeah, I'm a sinner, and pass it off and walk on. The ones who are truly convicted of their sin fall on their face. They have a time that they get alone with God. And they don't say, God, I'm a sinner. They say, God, you know where it was, you know when it was, you know what it was. And God, I confess it to you and... And I was kind of being vague, but if we're truly repentant of God, we're going to come to God and we're going to confess the sin that we have and we're going to ask God for forgiveness. And First John 1 John 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if we just say, yeah, I'm a sinner, we're really deceiving ourselves because we haven't confessed anything. The question last week was, do we keep his commands? First John 2, 4, he, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. And if you say that you love Jesus and you refuse to keep his commands, you're a liar. And you're not saved. And the truth is not in you. I want people to face the reality of we all must look at ourselves for who we really are. I'm not here to point fingers at anybody. I'm the messenger. I'm telling you what John said in his word. The second point is exerting, exhorting the world about worldliness. The first set of exhortations are about worldliness, which is all too common the problem with believers. The Greek word for world here is cosmos. In his uh, documentary about the cosmos, uh, oh, I can't call his name right now, but he said that the cosmos is all there is or all there ever will be. That is worldly thinking and every one of you have probably watched that film and your children have watched that film and right in the very front he says there is no God but if he had said there is no God the world would have rebelled against this movie. 
but he so slickly says the cosmos is all there is or all there ever will be. And I can't think of his name right now. So, it means the world system here. Cosmos is the world system. The organized system headed by Satan which leaves God out and is actually in opposition to him. The thing which we need to hate today is this thing in the world which is organized against God. The ancients created idols fashioned of woods and stone. Modern society has set aside this type of idol in favor of new idols. And I want you to hear this and get this. We don't have idols sitting on the shelf, uh, but some of you do in your homes. You've got a Buddha sitting in your house. And you go to church and you call yourself a Christian and you've got a stinking Buddha sitting on a shelf in your house. I'm kind of getting strong with that. I'm saying it in strong language here. You got God set up in your house. And you wonder why God doesn't bless you. You got Harry Potter books in your house. You got Harry Potter videos. And you let your kids watch them. You got all kinds of demonic stuff in your house. And you wonder what's going on. Let me just say this real quick. There are people that are actually seeing demons in their house. When you see these little shadows darting back and forth in your house, you're seeing demons. Oh, there's ghosts. There is no such thing as a ghost. Those are demons, and people see them. I had somebody call me not long ago, wanted me to come to their house and go through their house and pray over the whole house because they had demons in the bedroom. You can't hold hands with the devil and expect the demons to leave. We changed our, our Buddhas and our other idols for material wealth, for a comfortable lifestyle, and even uh, our children. Parents today put the children ahead of everything. This is part of the problem with the children in our society today. The children come before the family. They come before the husband and the wife. The airline pilot has got to be the one who gets there safely or the rest of the airplane not going to get there safely. The mother and the daddy are number one in the household and they are to treat each other as number one and the kids don't take priority over number one. I know I'm talking kind of plain this morning, but I just really feel the unction of the Holy Spirit to turn some things loose. Turn it loose, brother. Human beings have been seen and experienced the limitless bounty of idolatry where we place some created object or person in place of the one true God. I've seen people that are hung up on, a, on another person they can't even live their life. And they've got that person as an idol. It could be your wife. It could be your husband that you make an idol out of. I know people, I've seen people, they get hung up on somebody and if it's not their own spouse, they can't get them out of their mind. People get hung up on things. I, I, it just blows my mind away that men and women can be so hung up on another person that they can't even think straight. And they won't think straight and they won't make good decisions and they've made an idol out of a person. Well, there are three things about worldly living. As the first one is the lust of the flesh. That appears to be self-generated. It's our internal sinful tendencies taking shape and looking for something to satiate our carnal desires. This includes selfish ambitions, self-serving objectives, the all-powerful triumphant of me, myself, and I. I am number one. I am going to be number one. 
uh, if I have to spy on you or I have to use illegal means to get an upper hand of you. We've got people in the business world that go in, in, in politics. They tell me in politics that people are so underhanded they will stop at nothing to get something up on somebody else to find out what their business is and they will they will get, break into their computers, they'll break into their homes, they'll go through their trash. Uh, you know, uh, uh, most of the things I've just spoken to you about are criminal offenses and you can live up to 20 years in prison for that. Me, myself, and I. I'm number one and I'm going to stay number one. I don't care how I have to be number one. I'm going to look out for me and mine, and everybody else is going to suffer for it. Our world is so corrupt. Our people have, we're, everybody thinks they're number one, and they don't care about anybody else. In fact, they hate everybody else. We need to start loving people. We need to start putting the work of God ahead of number one. And I'm not saying y'all are here doing that. But if the Holy Spirit says you are, you are. But now look, we God is number one. Jesus Christ should be the, the focus of our everyday life. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. The next thing John talks about is the lust of the eyes. This includes sinful cravings triggered by what we see leading to covetousness and envy. Drive through the subdivision. Go down here and go through the subdivisions and look at the houses. Oh, man, I wish I had that house. Man, I, I can just see myself living in that house. Walk inside of it. Man, that's the prettiest living room. i got to have a living room like that. I want that house. People... Put their, the lust of the eyes. You get to perusing through your computer or your cell phone. You start seeing something that you like the looks of, and pretty soon you start digging and hunting and finding. And you, you can do that, and you wind up in websites that are ungodly. You know what I'm talking about. We may be perfectly content with what we have, but then when we see what somebody else has, oh man, look at that pickup truck. I gotta have one, and you know, I gotta have me a diesel pickup truck. I wanna put me a, a, a blower on that thing. I wanna make the black smoke roll out of it when I press on the, the gas. I mean, the the young boys, that's what they want. They want a diesel pickup truck. They want to make the black smoke roll. They want, it used to be a long time ago, uh, the boys all had to have their cars jacked up in the back. You rode down the road with your car looking like that. You know, we get, somebody starts something and, and we we got to have it. We can't live without it. Suddenly our own house, our own car, our own spouse, our own family, our own job, and our own clothes, or our own church just isn't enough anymore. Well, I only go to church where they've got a good nursery. I only go to church where they've got a really good youth program. I only go to church where there's people my age. I only go to church. Well, maybe you've got God sending you to a church that don't have those things so you can help start those things. Amen. Maybe God is showing you how good your spouse really is. Let me ask you, men, women, when you look at your spouse, do you fall in love all over again? When you look at your spouse, do you look at them in, in disdain? 
Is, do you look at them and say, oh, I just can't stand that? <laughs> or do you look at them and say, man, look at how good she looks. Amen. Do you look at your spouse that way? Or do you see something you don't like every time you look at your spouse? Maybe if you see something you don't like, you're supposed to be doing something to help your spouse out. God showed you something you need to help them with. I love you, and I fall in love with you every time I look at you. I still do. The lust of the eyes can also be a symbol of success. Titles, position, degrees are added to pages to a resume. The lust of the eyes suddenly makes us desperately need something we never, we didn't even know we didn't have. John finally refers to the boastful pride of life. The lust of the flesh comes from our sinful hearts. The lust of the eyes comes from the sinful world around us. And the boastful pride of life comes from our own lips. It comes from us inside of us. The arrogant words. Well, when people look at me, they just see how spiritual I am. They just look at me and they just know that I'm a spiritual man and they don't even know why I look so good. It's because I got the Holy Spirit on me. That's arrogance. The prideful claims. Well, my preacher at my church, just he preaches the best sermons in the world. Man, we, we've got the best Sunday school classes, you know, you may do it, but are you prideful about it? Well, I've got the, my house is a brick house. And I've got those corners laid up where there's some of the brick out and some of the brick in. I, what do they call that, Brother Bill? Corners. What? Coin corners. Coin corners? I think they're beautiful. They're attractive. I went to Redford, Michigan. I went to Temple Baptist Church in Redford, Michigan, and, and the church building was three stories tall, and they had those in the corners, and the young boys would come from the neighborhood, and they would climb up on the roof, climbing up those corners. Uh, they had a lot more wherewithal than I did. The exaggerated tales that make us look great greater than we are, usually at the cost of tearing other people down. Man, and you know, I could ride a horse. There wasn't anybody around that could ride like I could. I mean, I could just make horses do things. I just tore everybody else down, didn't I? I said nobody could ride the way I did. Look, I'm just a person. I'm just a man. We all need to realize we're just a person. If, if, we've do, if I have done anything good in my life, it's because God let me. That's not, look, Bob Rogers is nothing. I'm a nothing and I'm a nobody. We see this kind of boasting flowing from many sports heroes, slick politicians and strutting rock stars. I see it when I go to Walmart. I was in Walmart yesterday. You can see people walking through it and arrogance and pride. I see the way women walk and things women do. I see the way men walk and the things men do. If we didn't already have enough reason to avoid a love affair with the world, John gives us one more warning in 2.17. The world with all of its lust is passing away. That that house with those coin corners in it, the beautiful homes, the beautiful cars, it's all going to pass away. It's all going to burn up. If you can preserve it, and 
If you can take an antique car and put it in a barn and cover it up and preserve it, get it out once a year and wax it or whatever you got to do to make it stay shiny and beautiful, you can keep the oil changed in it. You can start it once every month. But I'm telling you what, <laughs> it's going to burn up. Amen. You're blowing your money away. Look, those things are beautiful and they're nice to look at. I like to look at uh, vintage tractors on YouTube. But they're all going to burn up. They're going to be nothing. Sinful delights have no part to play in eternity. The beautiful things you like to look at, the beautiful men that you like to look at, the beautiful women that you like to look at, all of that is going to be burned up. The men and the women are going to spend eternity somewhere. Are you looking at them in lust for what you see? Or are you looking at people and saying, I wonder where they're going to spend eternity? You know, um, when I was a young boy, Walt Disney died. And... And I was young, and I would see him every Sunday night when Disney come on, and he would still be there and still talking. And I just couldn't get over it that he was dead, but he was still there talking to me. But where did he spend eternity at? Where is he at today? Uh, Babe Ruth, when he died, where did he spend eternity? What about all the ex-presidents? When they die, where do they spend eternity? We might think we know, but do we know? Everybody that dies, the guy down at the grocery store that checks you out, or the woman that checks you out, the girl that checks you out, the young boys that died last week, where do they spend eternity? Did you have an opportunity to talk to them? There was a man that God told me to talk to, to tell him about Jesus Christ. And I kept thinking, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. He's, he's an older guy. But, and I didn't do it. And one morning, his, the house he lived in was burning up. And he burned in that house. And I didn't witness to him. When you do God's will, believing in His Son and living by the power of the Spirit, you will embrace the eternal. This house, the paint on the walls are nothing but your eternal soul is something that I need to focus on. People talk about heaven, how beautiful heaven will be. But they don't want to come to church and praise Jesus on Sunday morning. They're not willing to be in church the Bible says, if you, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Jesus said that. Where are they on Sunday morning? The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Well, I'm not going to go there. They, they were too strict. They wanted to live by the Bible. There were just a bunch of hypocrites down there, and I'm not going to be there. I'd rather be out in the woods. I can worship God just as good out in the woods as I can there. Well, do you? Hunters, when you go hunting, do you sit and just think and worship God? When you go to the woods, well, I can worship God in the, the mall. Do you worship God when you're in the mall? Are you worshiping what you can buy and bring home? Can we get real today? Can we just talk about it the way it really is? Yes. 
When you're dating somebody, what do you think about? Do you think of, all you can think about is having sex with them? Where do you put your importance at? It should be on God. Well, they just got... No, it's not they got anything. It's Jesus has got it all. All to Him I owe. Yes. When we fall in love with the world and the world system, Christian, when you're falling in love with the world and all that the world has to offer, you're falling out of love with Jesus Christ. You can't love both. Do you love Jesus or do you love the world? Well, there's a lot of people that goes to church on Sunday that, that if you talk to them Monday morning, you'd think they'd never seen Jesus. You'd think they'd never heard of Jesus. They slip up and they send you a text message and it's full of cussing. Either somebody hacked their phone or they were intended to... Have you ever texted somebody that you didn't name to text? You, get, you, you had a message for somebody and instead of sending it to them, you sent it to somebody else? You send it to the last person you were talking to instead of to the right person. I've done it. I've had texts sent to me. And I've had texts that I've received that had cussing in them from church people. And they'll swear up and down. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Well, it come from your number. If we fall in love with the world, we're going to fall out of love with Jesus Christ. Who we did do we come here to worship? Did we come here to worship the world or Jesus Christ? Well, I come to worship Jesus. Amen. Well, then act like it tomorrow morning. Act like it when you leave here. I used to go to a church for a while that was a huge church here in the area. <laughs> Man, you sing the songs about Jesus. Everybody loves everybody in church. You get out in the parking lot to, to go home and people won't even look at their neighbor because if they look at them, they'll have to let them go in front of them. <laughs> I, I, I hated the parking lot. That's part of the reason I don't go there. Part of the reason I quit going there. Have a good church service and you get in the parking lot and everybody hates each other. It's crazy. Look, we have exhorting about our witness. John's epistle gives three outstanding marks of the false teacher who is controlled by the spirit of Antichrist. We have to be careful people sneak into the churches. They act like they're Christians, but they're not. And they wind up, some of them get to be teachers. Some of them, look, I've, I've read and heard about a lot of people, uh, especially get in the head of a prayer team, and they wind up a person ahead head of a prayer team, and they've got the Jezebel spirit on them, and they come in there to tear the preacher down. A mark of the of a antichrist is that they depart from the fellowship. The word us refers to, of course, the fellowship of believers, the church. Not everyone who is a part of an assembly of believers is necessarily a member of the family of God. One of the evidences of true Christian life is a desire to be with the people of God. Here we go again. John is back on this thing. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. 1 John 3, 14. He's going to hit us again in chapter 3. I'm just letting you know of things to come. Do you love the brethren? I'm telling you, God, John is not letting up on this love thing. He's not done with it. The counterfeit Christians mentioned in 1 John and 
and two did not remain in the fellowship. They went out. This does not imply that staying in the church keeps a person saved. Rather, it indicates that remaining in the fellowship is one evidence that a person is truly a Christian. And I want to say this clearly. Just because a person does leave does not mean that they're not a Christian. It doesn't mean that you've got to go to Bethel Church to be saved. That's a mark of a cult. <laughs> when we first started having church here, people said, they're a cult, they're having church in a house. Counterfeit Christians mentioned, uh, excuse me, if you will investigate the history of false cults and anti-Christian religious systems in today's world, you'll find that in most cases their founders started out in a local church. They were with us but not of us, so they went out from us and started their own groups. So if, um, if somebody is here and they... They come to the point where, well, you know, I don't like what you're saying there. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go and start my own church. You might better watch out. That might be a, a sign that something is up. Be careful about that. Any group, no matter how religious, that has, for doctrinal reasons, separates itself from a local church which holds to the Word of God must immediately be suspect. So if anybody is here and they and we're preaching the word of God and and it's up to you all to let me know if I stop preaching the word of God don't just up and leave and say well they just do they just don't preach the word of God there well if you know if if you see that I'm doing something directly contrary to the, to the word of God uh the wise thing would be to do come and speak to the pastor personally. Just like if uh, I have something with my wife, and you know, if there's something with her that that doesn't suit good, I go and talk to her. I don't go and talk to the deacons. I don't go and talk to the elders. I go and talk to my wife. I don't go and talk to the church members about something that my wife didn't do right. Or something I thought she didn't do right. Usually, if I if she does something wrong, it's because I thought she did something wrong. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. It's a good place to laugh. Another mark of a false Christian or an antichrist is they deny the faith. The key question for a Christian here is who is Jesus Christ? Is Christ merely an example? good man, wonderful teacher, or has he come to God come in the flesh? Now, look, there's been people that I have asked them this question. Who do you say that Jesus is? And if they can't answer that, I remain very doubtful of them. I've had people that I've asked that question to. I've asked that question. Look, I've had people that I've asked that question to several different ways. If they have a problem answering it, there's a problem with their life. There's a problem with their Christianity. Who do you say that Jesus is? Well, he's a good man. He's a good example. I need to do what he did. No, that's not right. Come to me and tell me who you think Jesus is. He's the son of the living God. Yes. False Christians in John's days used two special words to describe the experience, knowledge and unction. They claimed to have some special anointing from God which gave them a unique knowledge. They were illuminated. And they were living on a much higher level than me. Are you? They are... They carry the anointing. They, they, I am illuminated. Well, look, I just know things that you can't possibly know. 
Be careful. God doesn't work that way. Not all preachers and teachers who claim to be Christian are really Christian. Look, we've got people leaving the, the pulpit who are denying Christ. They just walk away and say, I didn't know, I never did believe that. I've quit believing that. I'm not, you know, God didn't answer my prayer, so he really couldn't be God. Amen. Wasn't saved in the first place. You can't walk away from God. God won't let you. If you walk away from God, I'm not going to stay with that church. They teach. They would. They just want to preach the Bible. They want to get things that. I mean, they preach about things I don't believe. If it's in the Bible, you got to believe it. Well, that's the Old Testament. We can't go by the Old Testament anymore. They're just under legalism. It's important to stay with God's truth. The Bible is God's truth. The third thing is about an antichrist, they tried to deceive the faithful. Jesus calls Satan the father of lies. John 8:44 The devil's purpose is to lead Christians astray by teaching them false doctrine. 2 Corinthians 11 and thir- uh, 1 through 4 and 13 through 15. We should not accept everything a person tells us simply because he claims to be believe the Bible. Came up in Sunday school this morning. Well, God won't put anything on you that you can't take. That's not from. That's not in the Bible. Now, the principle may be in the Bible, First Corinthians ten thirteen. There's no temptation taking you, but it's common to man. But God, with the temptation, will make a way, make of a way of an escape that you'll be able to bear it. People quote the Bible all the time and they say things that the Bible does not say. We're warned against letting any man be our teacher for God has given us the spirit to teach us his truth. How many of you have heard uh, a a good teacher? uh, A Jimmy Swaggart or a uh, Chuck Swindoll, or a Charles Stanley, or a Chuck Missler. How many of you have listened to those guys, and when you listen to them, you just, the Holy Spirit just starts to go agree with what they're saying. Even if it's something you've never heard before, the Holy Spirit will begin to confirm that in your life. How many of you have been to a church where when you got done, with the the preacher got done, you was more confused than when you went in? We've got people saying things today that makes absolutely no sense at all. We've got people who are putting a baby penguin in with two other penguins, and they, they went to all kinds of extremes to make sure this baby penguin did not know what sex it was. It, it didn't have no sexual orientation. And they put it in with these two male or female penguins to see if it would figure out what it was. We've got people who are college educated who are doing this crazy stuff. We've got people in the pulpit, from the pulpit, who are going and promoting the LGBT agenda. The LBGT, whatever, XYZ group, their whole agenda is to come against Christ. They are the ones who want Christians to be shut up. They want to shut the Word of God up. They want to shut down the church, the true church. But they've come in the, the lie that 
they are loving and accepting of everybody. Why are some Christians led astray to believe false teachings? Because they're not adding to abiding in the Spirit. The word abide occurs several times in this section of John. It would be helpful to review. False teachers do not abide. They, they don't continue in the fellowship. The word message we have heard should abide in us. The anointing of the Holy Spirit abides in us. We should abide in the Spirit. As we abide in the Word and in the Spirit, we also abide in Christ. To abide means to remain in fellowship. And fellowship is the key idea of the first two chapters of this epistle. From chapters 3 to 5, the emphasis is on sonship, or being born of God. How many times does John got to say it? Are you going to stay in fellowship, or are you just going to get find a reason to leave? People find a reason to leave if they're not true Christians. If they're not, look, if you're not a true Christian and you hear the Word of God hammered down week after week, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to stay there. It's eventually going to get to you and you're going to go away and you're going to find some nice reason to justify why you left. It is possible to be a child in a family and yet be out of fellowship with one's father and, and other family members. When our Heavenly Father discovers that we are out of fellowship with Him, He deals with us to bring us back into the place of abiding. This process called chastening, child training. Hebrews 12, verses 5 through 11. If we say we abide in Christ, we should walk as He walked. If we love our brother, we abide in the light. John is hammering it, hammering it, hammering it. You got to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. There's a lot more to this love thing than just to say, "Well, I love you." There's a lot more. Well, I, you know, I, I love him or I love her. But I'm never going to be around them ever again. I'll never talk to them again. If we do the will of God, we shall abide forever. The will of God is for us to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. The examination of our walk. There's two questions this week. Here's the questions for this week. We've got two of them. Do you love the world? John 1 John 2, 15, 16, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Do you love the world? And is that where you turn to for answers to your questions? This is all sub-questions under do you love the world? Or do you love God, and that's where you turn to for your the answers to your questions? Who do you put first? Do you run to the world all week and forget about Christ? What, what about the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life? Do you want to look like the world? Do you want to smell like the world? Do you act like the world? All under, do you love the world? Next question is, who do you say that Jesus is? Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in the Trinity. Who do you say that Jesus is? Do you deny the Trinity? Do you deny Jesus as the Son of God? Do you not deny the virgin birth of Jesus? Do you deny His deity? Do you deny His death, burial, and resurrection? Well, they was just faking that. He wasn't really dead. They, they, he just laid down and, you know, he got feeling better and he got back up. 
Who gives you your marching orders? Do you give yourself marching orders and, and ask Jesus to uh, bless it? There's an exhortation to persevere. These things I've written to you, little children, who were most likely to be imposed upon by antichrists and deceivers. Those people who are weak in the faith, those people who are new Christians, those people who do not read their Bible, regularly are the most susceptible to Antichrist. There, look, there's a lot of good young Christians who get led astray early on in their Christian life by somebody that pulls them away and fills them up full of junk. It used to be that uh, during the Billy Graham Crusades, there was a group of people who would, when the people come forward at the end of his message, would be there, and they would try to pull these people away into their little cult. They were there. That was became a problem for Billy Graham's associate. Now, concerning them that seduce you, the Syriac, the Arabic, and the Ethiopic versions render it for them that seduce you. <coughs> Not that they were actually seduced and carried away with the error of the wicked. For God's elect may be staggered and waver. They may be tossed to and fro by false teachers and their doctrine, yet they cannot be totally and finally deceived. But the sense is this. These men endeavor to seduce them. They lay in wait to deceive and to attempt to deceive them by walking in craftiness, Deceivers walk in craftiness. Let that sink in. Let me say it again. Deceivers walk in craftiness. They want to stay one step ahead of everybody. They handle the word of God deceitfully, therefore that they might uh, be known so shunned and avoided. The apostles pointed them out and showed that they are that they are such who deny that Jesus is the Christ. Do not own neither the Father or the Son. In doing so, they acted as a part and apart from God. Now look, it is all about believing in Jesus and keeping Him number one. <clears throat> Jesus is the Christ. Threefold method of salvation. For those of you who are waiting to hear the good news, here's the good news. If you found out that you've come up short and that you're not really a follower of Jesus Christ, salvation is always by the blood. Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. Furthermore, this blood must be innocent, shed, and applied must be innocent. It must, Jesus Christ was the innocent Lamb of God. It was, it was shed. Jesus Christ shed His blood on the cross. It must be applied from the cross to our heart and our life. Have you got to receive this faith by faith in Jesus Christ to, re to get the blood applied to you. Salvation is always through a person. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that vow that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. It's through Jesus Christ. Yes. Neither is there salvation in other, any other, for there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. The third thing, salvation is always by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, Titus 2.11. <coughs> Have you received it? 
Have you received Jesus Christ? Christian, are you letting Jesus control your life? Or have you found that you've fallen under the influence of some false teacher somewhere? Do they teach you what the Word of God says? Do they take... Look, uh, I heard that the view was taking the Word of God the other day to try to disprove the Word of God. You know, the, the Bible says uh, the, there is no God. It's actually in there. But when you look at the full sentence, the full sentence says, the fool says in his heart there is no God. Are you listening to somebody who has taken the Word of God out of context? You know, uh, I had another preacher here in the area that criticized me. He said I was taking the Word of God out of context in my sermons. I would get a scripture here and a scripture there, and I was trying just grabbing scriptures to prove my point. <clears throat> I, I urge you to... Uh, it's not there yet. I didn't get it on last night, but I will get this uh, outline on the Internet, www.bethelchurchministries.org. If you'll go there and you'll look on the front page, I will by tomorrow morning I will have this outline on there. It will be exactly the way I preached it today. You can check it out. Check and see what the Word of God is what I preach square with the Word of God. Or am I making up something? Am I trying to lift up Bob Rogers or am I trying to lift up Jesus Christ? Christian, if you're not following Jesus, I urge you to, to confess it as sin and follow Jesus. Lost person, if you haven't trusted in Jesus Christ, if you haven't believed that Jesus Christ died for you, if you haven't believed that Jesus is the Son of God and He came here for that purpose, I urge you, today is the day of salvation. Don't let the day pass without trusting in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you just like any other sinner comes to you. God, we confess that we fail you. We say, I say things and I do things that I shouldn't do. And I shouldn't say. I confess to you that I have failed other people. I confess to you that there's been times in my life where I went astray. God, I need you to hear the prayers. Father, there are men and women who are Christians who need to get their life straightened back out with you. There's people out there that life is going pretty rough for them. And they need to get right with you. Then there's sometimes Christians walk away and everything seems to get better for a while. And then the truth of what really happened sinks in. Lord God, help them to come back to you. Father God, there's men and women out there and boys and girls that haven't trusted in Jesus Christ. I pray that they'll trust in Jesus Christ. That they'll realize that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on a cross and paid for their sin. I pray today would be the day that they would come to know Jesus. Lord God, for the Christians who want to live in sin, I pray, God, that you help them to get back to you. I pray, God, that the Antichrist would all be exposed for those who have deliberately tried to make merchandise out of the people of God, that you'll expose them and reveal them for who they are. Help your people, dear God. Help your people. In Jesus' name, amen.
Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Let me be like you in all my ways. Give me your strength. Teach me your song. Shelter me in the shadow of your wings. For we are your righteousness. If we die to ourselves and live through your death, we shall be born again to be blessed in your love. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Let me be like you in all my ways. Give me your strength. Teach me your song. Shelter me in the shadow of your wings. For we are your if we die to ourselves and live through your death, we shall be born again to be blessed in your love. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Let me be like you in all my ways. Give me your strength. Teach me your song. Shelter me in the shadow of your wings. For we are your righteousness. If we die to ourselves and live through your death, we shall be born again to be blessed in your love. We shall be born again to be blessed in your love. Hello friends, we want to thank you for stopping by today. We hope that you'll come back next week, and we're so glad that you came by. While our church is taking a time to respond to today's message, we're putting this message in to let you know that we're interested in anybody and those who have questions. If you have a question about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and believing on Him, uh, we're here to respond to you. Let us know. If you have a question about becoming an online member or if you have a question about today's message, you may uh, contact us at pastor at BethelChurchMinistries.org. That's our email address. You can also contact us at 2584 Elk Creek Road, Taylorsville, Kentucky, 40071. We are, uh, if you have uh, any questions, please let us know. Our phone number is 502-354-9072. And please, if we're not by the phone, leave us a message. We thank you, and there will be, uh, this information will also be at the end of this message. Thank you so much for coming by today.